Today on The Dr. Oz Show, inside the hidden world of binge eaters. I'm just disgusted with myself. The secret shame destroying their lives and putting their children in danger. I feel bad that I taught my daughter how to binge. Have you ever forced her to eat? The ultimate extreme. People think that I'm just fat, but the truth is I'm seven months pregnant. You're condemning your unborn son to a life of medical problems. Can Dr. Oz intervene before it's too late? Next. You've all been there. When something stressful or painful in your life drives you to eat uncontrollably so you don't feel. It's called binge eating, and it's remained mostly in the shadows until now. Today, we're taking you deep inside the lives of mothers who binge eat to reveal the shocking toll this devastating illness has taken on them and their lives. Meet Kelly, a beautiful wife and mother. What you don't see in this picture, Kelly's life is consumed by planning her next out of control food binge. I'm Kelly, and from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, I'm consumed by the thought of food. From the outside, I look like a typical mom. I have a husband, two wonderful children, a full-time job, but when it comes to food, I just can't control myself. The urge to eat is so overwhelming, and it's so unbelievable. I'm always thinking about what I'm gonna eat next. I try to control it, but the littlest things just set me off. A bad day at work, the kids not behaving, my husband working late hours. The only thing in that moment that will soothe me is eating. My mind's just racing. I'll grab anything I can get my hands on. I'll try to fight it. I tell myself I don't want anything. I just keep thinking, what in the house do I have to eat? It's like an animal, it's instinctual. I don't even know what I'm eating. I don't know what I'm grabbing. I lose all track of time. I can't get it in fast enough sometimes. My mind just shuts off, my body goes numb. I snap back into reality. I realize how much I've eaten. I'm just disgusted with myself. And then the self-hatred and the blame and the guilt kicks in. When I look in the mirror, it makes me very upset. My whole midsection is exactly where all my binges go. I wouldn't wish this upon anybody. I don't feel like there's an end. Binging's ruining my life. Kelly is here. So when you watch yourself on tape, who do you see? Someone I don't want to be. Someone who's upset and depressed. And I don't want to be that person. I don't want to hide it. I just want to be normal mom. When did your battle with binge eating start? I think it started about five years ago when I was preparing to get married. I went on the typical diet, restricting the foods that I love, trying to get into my wedding dress, um, trying to have that perfect day that every woman dreams of. And the more I restricted the food, that I love, the worse it got, the more binges happened, um, the more I craved the food. Would you take me on a binge with you? I'd like to understand what you're, what you're feeling and thinking. So just before it starts. Before it starts, I get anxious. Uh, I sweat. My insides shake. All I can think about is the food. It totally consumes my thoughts, my body, everything, and, and I just go for it. And when you're finished, obviously, we can see from that package that you're not very happy. But what do you feel physically after the binge? 
I'm depressed, I'm upset, I'm mad at myself. Um, my body physically hurts. Um, my mind is tired. I, it's just almost like an endless cycle. As the depression kicks in, the more I think I need to push that down mm -hmm. and another binge may come. What scares you the most about binging? Short term, I think it's not being able to physically play with my children, not being able to go out, um, looking at myself in the mirror hurts. Um, long term, I want to be there for my kids and with the amount of food and calories and everything that's going into my body, I don't know how much longer it's, it's going to last. I, I want to be there for my kids when they grow up. What's the worst binge you've ever had? Worst binge I've ever had was I made um, myself eat so much that I was physically sick. You threw up? I threw up. And how many hours had you been eating for? Four. It's, it's a lot of food in four hours. As I hear your story and, and listen to you now, I, I can't help but think that there's an emptiness, a void that that food is filling. What is that void? It's loneliness. My husband works very long hours, but once my kids go to bed, I'm by myself, I'm alone at night. The food fills my loneliness. I bet everybody here, everyone who can hear our voice can relate. Because food soothes the hurt. I mean, it's always done that for us. It's so powerful in that way. We've all been there. Um, but we all, all have to do what you're doing. So we look for help. And one of the places I would look would be my spouse. So y your husband's not here today. Uh, does, he, does he know that you're a binge eater? He knows I struggle with food. I don't think he knows the extent that I go to when I do a binge. Um, he tells me to stop. He just asks me to stop. Um, but it's like someone who's doing drugs. Tell an addict, a drug addict, to stop doing drugs. That's what it feels like. Sometimes if I'm eating too much at dinner, he says, well, do you think you should eat that? which then makes me very upset. And he doesn't mean to do it. I still sense a lot of pain. And it's hard to bury our pain under a pile of food. It is. For very long. You've got two beautiful children. They must watch you eat. I do it while they're in bed. They've never seen me eat. My biggest fear is for my daughter, who's three now, to see me binge and have this happen to her, it's my biggest fear. I would never want her to go through the pain I'm going through. Well, Kelly, your, your worst fear actually happened to one family. And when we come back, you're going to meet a mother who turned her teenage daughter into a binge eater. Find out how food has taken over their lives. Stay with us. Up next. Food is like my best friend and my worst enemy. For this mother and daughter, binging is their time to bond. I don't think anybody knows how much we really eat. The dirty secret destroying their health. What do you feel when you watch Stephanie eat like that? What will break the cycle? It's probably too late already. That's coming up. So let's start talking. Now the web to have a national conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today, I'm so lucky. Yeah! And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. You don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. Today's show is all about what happens when you're driven to eat and can't stop. For my next guest, Binging alone wasn't enough. And what she's done to her family, she can never take back. I'm Mary. I've been living with a dark secret for almost 20 years. I'm a binge eater. My most shameful secret is that I've taught my daughter how to binge. Well, some moms go shopping with their daughters, but we eat together. It's our mother-daughter bonding time. She can't walk a lot. She gets tired fast. The only thing we can really do together is eat. 
My mom will treat me like go to a buffet. Binging with my daughter makes me feel less lonely. It's like when a mother hugs you because you feel like everything is fine. I don't think anybody knows how much we really eat. Sometimes it does feel like a dirty little secret. You wanna eat something? It'll start off with just a couple of sandwiches and then before we know it, it's like like you're in a trance and you know, we'll finish a case of pop, we'll finish a bag of chips. It's like something that's uncontrollable. You would think that a whole family ate there instead of just two people. When I look down and see how much I've eaten, I get surprised. Sometimes I'm not even chewing it no more, like the food, it's just swallowing it. Food is like my best friend and my worst enemy. And now I'm passing it on. She's becoming just like me. I feel bad that I taught her how to do this, but how can I ask her to stop when I can't? Joining me is Mary. So how did this ever get started? I think I started binging when I was about 20 years old after I had my son. And um, it just, <clears throat> my daughter was, is always with me, so she um, grew up watching me do it. And I think she joined in probably about two years ago. Over this several year period when she's been binging, have you ever forced her to eat? I don't think I've ever forced her, but I've probably invited her to eat maybe when she wasn't hungry. And she's so used to doing everything with me, maybe subconsciously she joins in just to keep me company. I mean, you, you pull all the strings, right? You drive the car, you have the money, you buy the food. Yes. In that little tape piece, I saw you eating pizza and corn dogs and grilled cheeses. I mean, what, what, do you, what do you feel when you watch Stephanie eat like that? I'm sad because I don't want her to, to live like I do, and it's probably too late already. I'm going to ask you a question. I don't want to be harsh about it, but I, I want to try to unravel this onion a little bit. Your doctors were so concerned, I understand, that they would not let you fly here. Yes. Stephanie's walking down a path where all the things you're facing now and are going to face, yes. she'll just experience them in a few more years. How does that make you feel? Like I've cheated her out of a, a no normal life. I... <clears throat> I coped with my loneliness by eating, and so I think that that's all I've taught her how to handle her problems is by eating. And I know how hard it is with me to get out of it, so um, I don't know. I, I just want to change, and I want her to be able to want to be there for her. Well, I want to hear from her. So, so when we come back, you're going to meet Mary's daughter, Stephanie, who's waiting backstage. We're going to find out what she has to say. Stay with us. Coming up, is Stephanie worried she'll end up like her mother? You think about it much? All the time. Mary, did you know that? I didn't want that for my daughter. And later, the most extreme case of binge eating we've ever seen. Do your doctors know that you binge eat? Find out why it's even more dangerous for her. So let's start talking. Now the web to have an international conversation about health and wealth. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today, I'm so lucky. Yeah! And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. My most shameful secret is that I've taught my daughter how to binge. It's like something that's uncontrollable. Binging with my daughter makes me feel less lonely. Today's show is all about what happens when eating spirals out of control. We're here with Stephanie, whose mother taught her how to binge eat. 
So, Stephanie, do you think that you would have been a binge eater if it wasn't for being around your mom? No, because I only do it when I'm with her. Like, when we're alone and stuff. How many times a week is that? Every day. Every day. But when you do binge eat, does it make you feel good? Does it make you feel bad? Um, good and bad. Um, because good because I feel better sometimes, but bad because I feel like like I just gained a whole bunch of pounds, and I don't like I don't like it. When you, when you binge eat and you're spending time with your mom, does it make you feel closer to her? Um, yes. You do? Yeah. I, yeah, I do. So do you ever eat, binge eat, when you're not hungry? Sometimes I do. More than half the time? Yeah, I do. I just talked to your mom for a little bit. And... Mary, you're, you're about 400 pounds? Yes. Is that right? Are you worried that you're going to end up having your health compromised and maybe look like your mom? Yes, I am worried. I don't want to be like that when I'm older. Do you think about it much? All the time. Mary, did you know that? Not to what extent. I'm not, not really. I didn't think she thought about it. Kelly, if I can bring you into the conversation, I'm, I'm curious what you're thinking. You have children. Right? You're also a binge eater. What do you have to say to Mary? It makes me angry. My biggest fear is that I'm going to bring my children into the picture. I don't want that to happen. Um, we're supposed to be mothers. We're supposed to do what's best for our children. I would never, ever bring my daughter in to a binge. I don't want her to hurt like I'm hurting. I want to get better because I don't want this to happen to my daughter. It just, it makes me mad. The last thing I would want is for my daughter. Nobody wants to do anything to their children. Believe me, I know this. I didn't want that for my daughter. You want help, Mary? Yes. Is that why you came today? Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, we've been talking today about passing binge eating down to our kids. But up next, I'm going to share with you the most extreme case that I've ever seen. Let's start talking. Now the web to have a national conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today. I'm so lucky. Yeah. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. You don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. Today is all about binge eating. Now, we've been talking to Mary, who taught her teenage daughter, Stephanie, how to binge eat. But my next guest may be passing down her eating disorder to an even younger child. I want you to meet Camilla. My name is Camilla and I am addicted to eating. Thinking about food is just like, um, it makes my mouth water. I starve myself all day. I feel lightheaded, drained. When I start eating, you can't stop it. Chips, crackers, fruit cups, cookies. It's like a feeling that you just can't control. People think that I'm just fat, but the truth is, I'm seven months pregnant. I starve myself throughout the day until I'm ready to eat so that he can get a good meal at that one point in time. I feel like I'm suffocating my baby with all the eating that I do. 
When I'm doing the binge eating, I feel like I can't stop. When I'm in the car, that's my safe place. No one can see what I'm eating, how much I'm eating. Can I have the two cheeseburgers and the large Coke meal? Can I have a family size french fry? I feel like I'm actually satisfying the baby when I do these binge runs. I can feel him moving around as though he's excited, so it's just like a content feeling that he's being fed and that he's okay. I wonder what Benjamin is doing to the baby because I don't know. And I'm afraid that I'm harming my child. I feel like I'm crushing my baby. I make sure that the baby is still moving by pressing on him. It's one thing to harm myself, but it's another to harm my unborn son. So Camilla, uh, you mentioned your unborn son, mm -hmm. but do you think about him much when you're binge eating? I think about him all the time. And do you think about how you might be affecting his health? Yes, I do. I wonder if he's getting enough food or if he's getting crushed by me eating too much food. It's just like on my mind always. Did the binge eating start when you got pregnant, or had you been doing that before? Um, I honestly believe it started when I was a child growing up. I spent a whole lot of summers with my grandmother, and um, I grew up with a lot of skinny cousins, and I've always been the chunky one. And I think it just started, you know, with her nagging at me because I was heavier, and it was always like a thing that I needed the food. So when I wanted more, and asked for more, I got ridiculed for it. That hurt? Yeah, it hurt a lot. And I think that's what pretty much caused the binging. Do your doctors know that you binge eat? No, they have no idea. Can I give you some advice that they probably would give you if they knew it or if you asked them? Mm -hmm. They'd say that the most important moments of a human being's life are happening in the womb. And when you eat the way you're eating, mm -hmm. besides physically putting pressure on the child. You're condemning your unborn son to a life of medical problems, predictably. Diabetes, high blood pressure, even obesity. Does that worry you? Yeah, it does. It does. You're smiling, and I know you're probably smiling because you're nervous. I but, smile a lot. <laughs> yeah, now, smiling's good in general, but mm -hmm. When you're hurting yourself for the people you love, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I'm getting under the surface. Yeah, I understand. You hear the message. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time talking about binging in part because we all do versions of this. But I, I just need to understand a little bit from each of you how this affects you. In particular, I'm going to ask you, you've got an unborn baby in you mm -hmm. and you're binging. Mm -hmm. And as, you, as you're doing that, help me understand what it's, what it's like to imagine that you're hurting that child. It's a feeling of guilt. It's always a feeling of guilt because I don't know if I'm hurting him, which is why I look forward to going to the doctor's appointments to making sure that he's okay and that he's breathing and growing right. But you haven't told him that you're a binge eater. Right, I haven't told him. So what do you talk about that's more important than that with your doctor? I haven't discussed that. It's just, um, usually it's just a regular checkup with the doctor. Let me just move forward for a second. I'm going to come back to the child. Mm -hmm. uh, once you've had the baby, mm -hmm. how do you think that's going to impact on, on your binge eating? Well, I'm honestly ready to try to make a change for me, for my child, because I want to be around for him, and I want to be healthy for him and for myself as well. So what's your strategy for doing that? I mean, normally you would start that move with your doctor, with your mm -hmm. OBGYN. Mm -hmm. Well, normally... Um, I was doing Zumba before I got pregnant, and one doctor told me to cut Zumba out because I was kind of high risk, and I want to be able to exercise more and, you know, put myself on the right track with that, and I know eating is going to be a part of that. That's the part that I'm afraid of. Yeah, I, I just think that Zumba is, it's part of the story, mm -hmm. but Zumba's not going to deal with your binge eating. Right. There, you know, we've been talking already about how so much of food in general is about mm -hmm. soothing the pain that we have in life. Mm -hmm. And yes, some of your pain might be from your grandmother mm -hmm. saying things to you that hurt you. Mm -hmm. But there's usually something that's happening more recently. Not, are you lonely? No, I'm not. I'm not lonely. Um, 
I've been living with my mom for the last year. I moved back home from Missouri, mm -hmm. and nothing has really changed. She and I are close, and she is aware that I have bad eating habits, but not binging habits. Mm -hmm. But I really don't feel that I'm lonely in any way. So why haven't you shared with your mother that you've got a binging issue? Because I really never really looked at it until, you know, it became an issue for me, myself. And that was like this year when I realized everything that was really happening. Was there a wake up moment? I mean, yeah. What was that? When I got pregnant. But you're seven months pregnant. Yeah. I mean, the party's almost over. Yeah. All right. Up next, the medical realities of binge eating, the dangers of what you can be doing to your body during just one binge. You are not going to want to miss this. Up next, the risks are real and graphic. I don't like to do this, but I think it's the best way to help. You. How it can turn deadly. And later, an intervention. It is absolutely not hopeless. Steps to take back control. So let's start talking. Now the web to have a national conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today, I'm so lucky. Yeah. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. When I start eating, it's like a feeling that you just can't control. People think that I'm just fat, but the truth is, I'm seven months pregnant. That was just one of my guests who is a self-proclaimed binge eater. Now today is all about what happens when eating spirals out of control. I wanna help all of you understand that the risk that you're facing with binging is a big time risk. In order to do that, I'm gonna show some pretty graphic stuff. And I don't like to do this, and I've thought long and hard about it, but I think it's the best way to help you. I'm going to just tell you when at home that you may not want your kids to see this because it's going to be pretty much a reflection of what's going on inside your bodies. So come on over. We're going to start with a demo of an organ. If you can come on over, I'm going to show you what a real stomach looks like, a normal, healthy stomach. If you can all put your purple gloves on. Steph, you can put those on. And um, the miracle of the human body when you've been in there, and as a surgeon, it's something that I get to do a lot, is you see how spectacularly it's created. And this is a healthy stomach. You'll see that it has a very thin wall. Can you all see, that? see how thin that wall is? And it has little folds on the inside to take advantage of the fact that it's so thin. So go ahead and feel that. You should go around. Kelly, take that. So, the wall is thin because it's supposed to be allowed to grow if you need to because he had a particularly large meal. The problem with binge eating is that very delicate, friable structure with little blood vessels going into it can become damaged and it can expand a lot. And when it expands a lot, it can cause some big problems. So take your purple gloves off, you can put it there. I'm gonna walk you over ne next to us where I built something that reflects what I'm talking about. So Camille, you can go over to the end. This is what your belly looks like. And you see all those little tubes in there? Those are the intestines. And the intestines are lying under the stomach, which is this green sac here. When you binge eat, it begins to swell the stomach. So go, go ahead, Kelly, throw something in there. Just throw those donuts in there. Throw, throw all the donuts in there. If it was one donut, I wouldn't be bothering you. <laughs> all right? And then that stomach starts to get larger and larger. And go ahead, uh, Camilla, throw those hamburgers in there. Again, we're not talking about a small amount of food with this binge eating. If it takes four hours to binge eat and you're so sick that you start to vomit, you can see it starts to cause some big problems. And then, Mary, go ahead and hand this to your daughter. And Stephanie, show me what happens when you put that in there. Go ahead. I'm trying to make room in there. And then finally, Mary, toss that in there. And you can see that you are crushing those organs. They are being squeezed, and I try to make room for them, but it is tough. And then you add a soda on top of that. Right? There's not much room in there. The key organs start to get crushed. The intestines get squeezed and twisted. The food can't pass through. The pancreas, that key organ that digests the food, it can't get rid of its fluid, so it actually eats itself up. I don't know if this makes sense to you, but I was concerned 
that you needed something that was real, not a pretend. So I'm going to show you real pictures of real people who have done this to themselves. Is that okay? All right. So this is an image, a scan, of someone's stomach, a normal stomach. This is the belly area. The head would be up there. These are all the intestines here. That is the stomach. You see that right there? That little, little circle there? Now I want to show you someone who had a scan, the exact same uh, scan, after they had had binge eating. That liver squished up there. This is the stomach. Everything you can see. And you see the little organs squeezed down here? There's not much room there, is there? Stephanie. Now I warned you earlier that I wanted to show you some fairly graphic images. This was the warm-up. So I'm just going to share this with you because I think you need to see it. Sometimes if you've been, each, been binge eating, things don't work out well. I'm going to show you a picture of, of an autopsy of someone who started binge eating at 9 o'clock at night, and by 5 in the morning, this had happened to them. And again, you notice they weren't particularly heavy. Here's their arm. There's the chest area there, and this is the intestine area, and there's no intestines visible. It's only the stomach. And you see how the stomach is all blue? It's blue because it's dyed. It is so filled up with food, no blood can get into it. And when it died and began to squeeze the small intestines down below it, everything got suffocated. Is this sinking in? Mary, do you see this? Camilla? So I've got to ask the big question to you. Now that you've seen this, how do you feel about your binge eating? Thoughts? I don't want that to happen. I need a change. It's got to stop. It's hard to see. And it, it, it has to stop. It can't go any further. What are you willing to do to stop it? So I want to bring in the expert, eating disorder specialist and author of Woman, Food, and God, Janine Roth is here. And Janine, you've been through what these women have gone through. Right. Help me understand better what's going on. What is binge eating? So I have been through it and I have lived in a nightmare realm where one time I actually gained 80 pounds in two months. Two months. So I did that to my stomach. And if I can break free, anybody can. But what's most important here, besides, of course, what you're doing to your stomach, is to know that it's not about the food. When you start eating because of feelings you don't want to feel, what happens is that you feel shame, you gain weight, you feel bad about yourself, and then your whole focus gets on the shame and the weight gain no longer on the feelings. And until you deal with those, recognize those, name those, and feel those, this whole, whole thing is not going to end. That's just a short taste of what we're going to do when we come back. Because our goal right now, and the first step to facing your health, means facing your fears. So Janine is going to take these women through an intervention to save their lives. So let's start talking. Now the web to have an international conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today, I'm so lucky. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. Today we've met four women who say that out of control binge eating is destroying their lives. Eating disorder and food addiction specialist Janine Roth is back. So what's the first step to help these women? The first step is to ask the right questions to see, to get down to why they're using food. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that now with all of you. The first thing I want you to know is that we don't want to eat hot fudge sundaes as much as we want our lives to be hot fudge sundaes. So, Kelly, let me start with you. What do you think would happen if you talk to your husband about how lonely you are and you let him know what was actually going on? I don't think it would help because it's his job to be working at night. Right. So let me just say something there. 
It's also his job as your spouse to talk to you and to know you and to help you through things. And right now, he's not doing that. And you're taking it all on yourself. And that's not fair. And it's not right. Mm -hmm. So, hi, Mary. So I'm wondering, Mary, if you feel like you're being more of a mom or more of a friend to your daughter. When it comes to binging, I think that I've pushed motherhood aside. Yeah. And so what I want to say to you is your job is to be a mom first. And a best friend comes down on the list. And as a mom, it's really, really to help your daughter and to deal with your own feelings. And you said that you feel better. You don't feel as lonely when she is binging with you, which makes me want to know, well, tell me about your own loneliness and also very much like what I said to Kelly. You've got to recognize that loneliness, feel it so that you don't bring her into it and, and you are able to be a mom to her, really a mom. <clears throat> and so, Stephanie... Hi there. Hi. Hi. I know you're kind of quiet. So I, I want to I wanna ask you a question, okay? Is it all right? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. What do you think would happen, or do you feel like your mom would be hurt if you stopped binging with her? I don't know. Yeah. It's something to think about. It's something to think about because the two of you are, as you've talked about, best friends. So I want you to know that, that getting yourself, your own life, it's not too late. Mary, I wanted to say this to you. You said it might be too late. For Stephanie, it is absolutely not too late. She's beginning her life. And part of your job is to have the resolve to allow her to have that life. And for you, Stephanie, to, to really know that your mom loves you, but loving you does not mean binging with you. And if she was my mom, and I know this would be really hard for me to feel, I might be angry with her for pulling me in to a binge pattern. Don't you think so? Yeah, you're shaking your head there, Mary. So I think, I think you're aware of this, but I think healing yourself first and, and understanding you're a mom and not bringing your daughter into this by dealing with your own feelings but also drawing the line. I think that, um, if I can say something, my mom passed away when I was 11 years old. And so I never, um, after she passed away, I never had anybody be a mother to me. So right. it's... Yeah. It's hard with my daughter because I feel like I'm scared to be alone. And maybe that's why unconsciously I've pulled her in closer to me. I'm so glad you're saying that. I'm so glad you're saying that because I think this is what we were talking about. This is where it all begins. So what we need to do is look at that. That fear of being alone, that loneliness, because that's the root of all of this. You're so brave for recognizing that and for saying that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Camilla. Hi. Hi. So I have a question to ask you. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about your grandmother. You talked about your grandmother, mm -hmm. um, about the way that she shamed you. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you've internalized that voice, mm -hmm. your grandmother's shaming voice, mm -hmm. and that's how you talk to yourself. Can you see that you're actually doing that again? Yeah, I can say so. And, and so the other thing that I wanted to say to you, mm -hmm. when you and I had a chance to visit mm -hmm. yesterday on the phone, mm -hmm. you mentioned to me that you were feeling like in a dead-end job. Mm -hmm. And... So when Dr. Oz was talking to you about your feelings there, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that feeling of feeling like 
I'm getting a degree, I'm in a dead-end job, I don't know what to do, I don't like my job the way it is, okay, fine. There's nothing to do about it, mm -hmm. so I'll just eat. Mm -hmm. I'll just eat. And, and that's sort of what I was saying to you, Kelly, you know, because you also feel like there's nothing to do about it. And so if you feel like there's nothing to do about it, and you're hopeless, and that's never true. I want all of you to know it is absolutely not hopeless. There is always something to do. There is always a place to begin. Mm -hmm. So Janine, you, you artfully describe, I think, what all of our guests are feeling, what so many people at home, even if they're not full-blown binge eaters, often do with food. But these are serious issues. I just showed an autopsy picture. Yeah. People die with this. Yes. So, so what can we do that's meaningful that can help these, these folks? I think going into some kind of treatment, making a real commitment to change by engaging in some kind of treatment would really be good. So here's what I'm going to do. Let me give you a few minutes to think about this. When we come back, I'm going to present our treatment plan. Who's going to take it? That's the big question. Stay with us. Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz's show. So let's start talking. Now the web to have a national conversation about health and wealth. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today. I'm so lucky. Yeah. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. You don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now back to the show. We're back with our plan for the women who are in the throes of binge eating. Wellspring at Structure House in North Carolina is graciously offering aftercare treatment for all of you, if you'll accept. Eliza Kingsford from Wellspring at Structure House is here. So Eliza, I'd love to hear about your organization and your plan to help. Sure. So what we'd like to offer is a 28-day full immersion program that's specifically designed for binge eating. Uh, and it's also specifically designed for you as individuals. So we'll talk about, as Janine mentioned, the why. What got you here? What are your emotional triggers? What have been the barriers to your specific success so far? What have you tried that hasn't worked? Uh, and then we need to talk about the how. So you'll have the opportunity to participate in a variety of individual sessions, group sessions that will teach you new skills. So we'll replace your old coping mechanisms and old coping skills that haven't been working for you, hopefully with new ones, um, again, individualized too, that work for you, fit into your lives, that will teach you new skills to be successful long-term, because that's the goal that we're working towards is your long-term success, so that you end up not having to deal with this again. Thank you very much, and thank you for taking them under your wing if, if they accept the offer. So Camilla, I'm gonna start with you. We're serious about this. It's gonna take a month of structured eating in order to deal with them. So are you willing to go in? I am. You are. Mm -hmm. Good for you. <laughs> Kelly. It's, it's a month away from your husband, but I have concerns uh, about your ability to get help where you are now. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is anything where I am now. It would take, yeah, I would. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> and Mary and Stephanie. I know there's been a lot of pain uh, caused to you by going through the discussions today. Are you willing to take advantage of this opportunity? I am. Stephanie? Yes. You'll be BFFs in a different way. Through treatment, I hope you find the love, the intimacy, the connection that you're all searching for anyway. Uh, you know, I think this is a big issue for all of us. Our relationship with food is complicated, frankly, no matter who we are. And to better understand the role that food plays in your life, I want you to ask one question of yourself tonight. What would it be like to feel your feelings rather than eat your feelings? Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's next.